Welcome back to Mars of the Mission on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 7 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me again. Off the back of the previous episode, I said I was going to sort out the honey pallets. I'm picking these up, putting them into stacks of four, um, and I have got, <laughs> hopefully, I've got a, one of our autonomous tractors. Um, it's going to be bringing over the trailer for me to start loading up. Um, I don't know how well it's going to do. And I don't even know if there's um, AI routes. Normally you have like the routes full of roadways and stuff like that. I don't know if it's going to come directly across the field. or uh, Honestly, I have no idea. Um, so all I'm going to do is yeah, put these in stacks of four. I don't know if it was coming yet. I'm <laughs> assuming it hasn't stopped. That's the thing I do so many times. Set him off. Her. It. They them whatever and um you, you kind of make that assumption unless you sit watching the map for them to go and then sometimes you think right brilliant they're moving then they'll hit an obstruction or they'll turn around and go a completely different direction or they'll do something really bonkers and um, so hopefully they'll be arriving soon i can load the trailer up <laughs> we'll see Hallelujah, brothers! It's worked. I mean, it has come straight across the crops, but you know, and <laughs> a day late and a dollar short. That's the AI walk, AI workers. Maybe I'd set it too far up that way. Anyway, I'll sort this out. I'll get it brought back over and I'll get it loaded up. That's peculiar. Or maybe shall I just reset it? I'm going to reset it. Let's set it a bit further along. I think I might have set it there because I I thought I'd be further up, or I was worried about hitting. The pallet's already put out, that kind of thing. We'll see. See if this works. It should do. It should start moving, shouldn't it? Uh, there, there we go, look. Only mild crop damage. So I'm going to start loading up and I will see you in a little while. It's just gone one o'clock in the afternoon here on the colony. In, in the colony, isn't it? Um, at the colony, my autonomous worker took the honey that's been sold, that's come back. Um, our money has gone down dramatically because we have pre ordered. Because as we go into December, our next delivery will be coming. So I have ordered some equipment, some machinery. We've also put in another building. Oh, blimey. Right worker didn't get far enough for that did it um, okay um, so we put another building in which I'll talk about when we go into December I'm hoping our grass I don't think it'll be ready December maybe but we are hmm. well you'll see in December we're gonna do something we've got autonomous tractors but we do need worker accommodation so we've got a couple of options with that. We can go futuristic with habs and that kind of stuff. Or we can go pioneering and old school. Let's be honest. I mean, I suppose what we've got to try and do is make ourselves self-sufficient. So we get to a point where we don't need any more deliveries coming up from Earth. But we've got stuff on here. And if we are taking all out of the ground and we've got stuff to produce metals and you know the various different products that we could potentially need and produce ourselves we can but if you were to go out into space and if there was you know I, I, I'm a firm believer that's another big question that's the good thing with this series it, you can ask, ask those those big questions when we were doing this we taught this at school it's ultimate questions it's questions that don't necessarily have an answer they get you thinking about it's your thought process is about you know all, all sorts of you know there are questions that have a yes or no answer there are questions that have multiple answers and then really ultimate questions and the ultimate questions are the ones we don't necessarily at this point in time have answers to and i know i said about whether you know, people believe space is infinite and i have to say the responses were many and varied and something i hadn't 
anticipated. I did have a few messages from people um, regarding the religious perspective on that, which hadn't crossed my mind. I kind of came at it, uh, not scientific, I'm not a scientist, but um, yeah, I, I kind of said about, you know, whether uh, there is an edge to space, whether it is infinite, whether, you know, all that kind of thing. And a lot of people came back and said, oh yeah, yeah, it must go on forever. And I had some people come back and say, well no, you know, like anything in the world we understand, there are edges, there are borders, there are limits. But again, it may come down to what we understand, what we don't understand, what we don't know yet, you know. So many times throughout history, scientists and people have said, this is it, this is a fact, this is blah blah blah. Then 50 years down the line, 100 years down the line, it turns out that fact they believed at the time wasn't a fact. At the point they were at, at that point, the way they could prove it, the way they could show it, was at the limit of science or whatever it might be, thinking at the time, and it turns out further down the line, no, actually, it's this, you know. So it's interesting how something that is an absolute solid fact now might not be a solid fact in 100 years' time, in 200, 500 years' time. Um, so I hadn't thought about the religious side of it, and there were some co comments from people that, that spoke to me very respectfully as well um, about the religious side of things and how people feel about um, the creation of all of the things we know and understand, you know. Um, which I, I thought was, yeah, it, was, it just yeah, hadn't crossed my mind. So today's question then, are we alone? That's the thing, are we alone? My feeling, and again, this is my own personal, however you feel about it, it's entirely up to you. If there are truly billions and billions of stars and planets and, you know, potentially infinite galaxies, however you want to look at it, I think it's arrogant of us to believe that we are the only species in this universe. Is it one universe? Are there multiple universes? You know, it's, it's you know... Um, I firmly believe that out there somewhere, and they call them the Goldilocks planets, the planets that could, we could live on, we could survive on. If ours exists, then why aren't there others that exist like it? In billions, there's, there has to be, surely, statistically, mathematically, there has to be. Um, would people have changed to be like us? Would they have adapted to their particular environment if it's slightly different to ours? Again, with gravities and stuff like that, if there's a slightly different gravity, everything changes. The, the way our world is, is because of the environment. Everything changes and adapts to the environment. So I, I don't know. I, I think potentially out there, yeah, there are... But anyway, so what I was starting off by saying <coughs> is... Um, if we were to find one of those Goldilocks planets and you land, if you can't bring resources with you, you need to use the resources that are there. One of those resources potentially could be woodland, trees. So we go back, even though we're it's science fiction, becoming science fact, but even though we're out there in the stars, we would end up going back to a pioneering um, existence maybe using modern tools and equipment but utilizing so building log cabins processing wood and lumber you know it would be coming back to timber framing if we could if we can't bring enough materials with us could you find a source of, of something to be able to make metals or a metal substitute to make nails and and sharp object you know all that kind of stuff i don't know it's one of those things that it fascinates me that that quest out into the it's why i like games like starfield and you know, all that kind of stuff i i love that pioneering searching expanding I, I just think it's i don't know i would i would love one day i know i built my you know my man cave studio i know i built it out of pallets and all that kind of stuff i would love to i would love to build a log cabin it's one thing myself and Mrs. P have always said that thing of that dream, that lottery win. We'd love to. I'd love to buy a farm. Of course, I would love to buy a farm up in the Lake District. Buy a farm, but on that property, I would want to build a cabin, um, or 
failing that, finding a plot of land that we could get permission on and building a cabin on a plot of land. We talked about, I've probably said this before, we talked about moving to Alaska. We, we looked at, because we watched a lot of programs on Alaska. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm a hardy soul. I would say I'm adapt, I can adapt. I would say I'm, I would like to give stuff a try. The problem is the older you get, and I, I, know, I feel like I'm getting older, you know. Um, it's not a young person's thing to do because it's a, it's a harsh environment. But I think the challenge of that would just be staggering. And what an experience. Even if you failed, to say you tried is, is just, you know. Anyway, what I wanted to show you here is, I've done, I'm doing it again. Um, most of the stone is gone. There's a few little bits here and there, but most of the stone is gone. Most of the um, big rocks have gone. We've got three in the middle, which we'll get out at some point. The ore is there, and like I said, there's some ore over there. I'm not, not touching that at the moment. So all of the stone is out, and the stone is, we've got stone coming out of our quarry. We've got our universal crusher. We've got our new kind of wash plant, um, pay dirt facility. And then we've got another building that we've had constructed just off to the side, which I said we weren't sure if we were going to do, and the ore was going to be processed down on earth. But you know what? We're doing it here. Um, because there's loads more equipment we want. I want. <laughs> and that stuff doesn't come free so i will see you in december sorry i've done it again i i'm, I'm just these things are bubbling in my head and you know i'm just I, i'm always curious that's why I, I love meeting people and i love talking to people and i love you know i always did it when i was a manager at royal mail when i was an instructor with cadets um i love finding out things i i have a thirst for knowledge um, I like to think I'm, I'm a broad-minded, open-minded person, that my opinion can change over time when I'm presented with new facts, new information. And I, and I like finding out about people and cultures and experiences and, and you know, how we are all so very, very different, but in so many ways, so much the same. It, I don't... I'm just doing it again. This series is this. This is bringing out all the deep stuff. <laughs> Anyway, see you in December. It's December 1, it's 10.15, here at the colony. The Kent weather system is playing tricks. It's making us feel festive. Um, we've got snow. I'm, I mean, yeah, that's why I've got the fire going. It's a little bit nippy. Um, but I'm not quite sure I can't remember how to do that. I think it's circled. There we go. Fire's out. Now, as you've seen, I got up earlier. I've come back just to have some breakfast because it was a bit nippy. Um, this month's tree allocation has been put in another 948 so it's time to check the to-do list um because we sorted out the last of the beehives and we saw that and the honey's going and that's all running really well um so we've got our 20 beehives in that's got a check in the box we're done that's beehives sorted um they can run do whatever they want to do like i said once the wild bees run out We'll swap those over to standard ones and we'll keep the honey chugging away. That's fine. Um, because that's that's taking up kind of production's space. As far as the trees go, we were up to 1,936. I planted 336 because we had that weird... We had some left over and we had some odds and ends. So I did those. And then I've done another 948, um, which you've just seen. Um, so we're up to 3,220 of the 10,000 that we need to plant. So each month... Another 948 and we'll chug away. Um, I have actually, 
we've planted trees now. I've got quite a, a, a sort of a thick amount up this top section here. And then round this section, I had that weird thing where I had them run down in a weird order. And I was left with one basket with them in. So I had a thin single line that ran all the way around to about here. So what I did today, I put some more in at the top here. And then I got to about there, I think it was, where it started doing single line. And I put another triple line in. So we've got four rows running from there all the way around the top. Again, to about there, I think. So we've got a gap here where I think we've got a single line. Um, so I'll just put some more in up there. And we've got plenty of space up there, so I've got more room to put some up. But what we're going to be doing now, what I was talking about, about workers coming. Now, grass I don't think is ready to go, but as you can see, green all across there, which means our sugar cane is now growing across the entire field, which is brilliant. So what we're going to do now is head down, check out this month's delivery, and see what we've got. Take it nice and easy down here. We did get a bit airborne last time. So check out the deliveries. I had had ordered some mowers. We ordered um, a fertilizer, lime spreader. What else did we order? Um, a wheel loader attachment. Oh, the new tractor. Because we got rid of the agri power, the T Wolf, didn't we? Um, so we got a new. Actually, we'll take the wheel loader in. I don't want to park this inside. Park it inside. We're inside a dome. We've got snow. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing new tech to an old process. Um, so we're going to be... Because we've got to put more trees in, a lot of people have said you do need to cut those trees down. Now, as I was saying about pioneering and being out in, in you know, utilising what we've got, rather than getting prefabs brought up, we're going to cut down those trees, we're going to put them through the sawmill, we've got a sawmill extension as well now, um, I'll show you that, and we're going to make prefab walls um, and some lumber and whatever so we can build cabins, so we're going to go old school, so we're going to be doing cutting trees down, which is a very old process, we're going to be running it through the sawmill, which is a slightly more modern process, we're going to make prefab walls, which is a much more modern process, but also some lumber as well, and we're going to build cabins, cabins have been built for you know hundreds of years so um yeah but what we're going to be using to um oh hang on i want to drain the battery what we're going to be using to cut the trees down is definitely new tech <laughs> and why not that's what i say so let's check out the new um i'm not sure we're supposed to be getting flurries in here are we um, that's a bit worrying it's very weird, it's such a strange thing. On, on any other um, farming area, any other map, you wouldn't think twice. It'd be like, oh, that's all right. So mowers, yeah, we've got, so we've got our front our wheel loader attachment there. I'm probably going to use that for picking up logs. Fertilizer and lime spreader. I did mention this a little while ago. A lot of people suggested this and said this actually runs very economically. So when you are putting lime down and fertilizer or whichever, however you want to go about it, um, it's very, very efficient with how it puts it down. So new tech with that system. Uh, and then we've got mowers. Now this is really cool. We've got Kubota mowers have been supplied and sent up by Kubota, but they've also done them in the old NASA white to save on, save on weight with the orange paint. <laughs> But they are Kubota mowers. Uh, we've got the front and rear mower. That one will um, windrow for us as well. So when the grass is ready to cut, we can start doing that. We do actually have um, a forage wagon, don't we? So once we can do that, we can start on sheep. And we can produce hay, which means then we can potentially get cracking on preparing stuff for cows, for total mixed ration, um, and all that kind of stuff. But for the time being, and there's our new tractor. So we've got a second one of our Lunar Edition. I said Mars edition before, didn't I? I meant Lunar edition. I know it didn't go down very well, but it, it's all right. So what I'm going to do is grab this and take this over. What we'll do, I didn't really show you the, the, the ore the ore facility. It is running to that, but I haven't got it set to store. Am I set to storing? I might be, actually. We'll just go over and have a look, actually. I can't remember what I set it to. Um, so we're going to get some trees down. I need to bring over... Actually, do I need to bring over a trailer? I'm thinking with the wheel load, if we do the trees at this end first, we can take them into the sawmill and just get that running. It might be like a tree at a time, but we can get a few in and get them going. Once I've got that done and we've got a few of those down, because then what I'm going to do, we'll clear the stumps and then that'll be a nice area. We can put another load of more trees in 
it just gives us more space and as I said before what we can do if we start running to an issue where when you're getting close to our 10,000 and we run out of space we've got all the space between these we've got around the outside so we've done the top lip and we've still got tons of space up there and then we can also um, come down a bit but what we can also do we can landscape um, and that's another reason why I'm trying to build our finances up because if we want to do some landscape landscaping landscaping maybe make some more terraces on the higher areas with some slopes and stuff we could put more trees up on the terraces potentially that's what I'm thinking so um, yeah. and then we'll skip ahead because we need to get to um, some harvesting yeah, we seem to be getting in flurries it's weird where it's coming I'm not quite sure where it's coming in from but um, and it, I don't think I haven't checked the haven't checked the Kemp weather system to see how we're looking for um, our weather. It's going to snow all day. <laughs> how weird. <laughs> oh dear. I hope you're smiling. You know who I mean. <laughs> it is funny. Anywho. Yeah, so the ore production, I haven't got enough money for the next in the um, pay dirt processing yet. Have I missed a strip? Is there a gap there? Oh, maybe not. Um, yeah, so as far as the pay dirt goes, it is being produced. The wash plant is washing it. We've got nearly 100,000 litres, I think. Always over and have a look. And um, I say always over, this isn't the fastest piece of. No, that's all right, actually. Always do the third one, that's all right. Um, Oh, well, that was the thing I was going to say. This refinery, actually, we could probably... I was said about this. We don't technically need this because I was going to use it for diesel. We've got a diesel point here, but our refinery over there is producing diesel, and that's what I was going to say. Let's go to... There. Um, so that, our, our, a large refinery, is producing all the various different things. They're all set on selling, apart from our diesel, which is set on storing. But we haven't needed any diesel yet, and that's a continuing process. That's nearly full. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the output for that diesel at the moment to selling. Over the next hour, when that sells, I'll put it back on storing, we'll let it start storing again. Um, once we then start to need to refuel vehicles, then that's fine. We've got a couple of electric ones and stuff, so it should be right. So I'm setting that to selling. Um, just because you know all of a sudden if we go over the next hour and the money and the money will go up anyway because all of our refineries all of our ore processing those things but what i have changed oh no hang on, hang on, wait. what i have changed is the um the copper ore and the gold ore is now going over to the new facility the ore processing um it's not producing a huge amount of gold it's produced more copper than it has gold um, but I'm probably going to set those to selling as well so whatever it has produced it will then sell but I just wanted to show you you know again full transparency this is what we're doing um, I showed you the, the the crater that's done and then we'll get over and we'll get some trees cut down we'll get those into the sawmill and we can at least get the sawmill chugging away um, I think another big step forward is going to be once we get animals. I know I've said that a few times now, um, and I've, I've, a couple of other processes I've found that I wanted to do, and then once we've got enough money built up from what we're processing at the moment, we'll put in the next step of the um, pay dirt, which will be the gem processing, and we should get silver and gold and gems and diamonds. Um, I think it was the diamonds? Yeah, I'm sure it was diamonds. Which means we can have diamond bits for our cutters and things like that. So again, other than, you know, you imagine having Mars diamonds. You think diamonds are expensive now. <laughs> you go and buy a wedding ring with a Mars diamond. Ooh, pricey. Any bit really, I suppose, Mars gold. It's that weird thing, isn't it? The prices of things, the same as it is with crops, it's no different to anything else. Precious, precious gems, metals, that kind of stuff. The reason that gold is normally worth so much is because there's a finite amount of it and, the, and they reckon there's only a certain amount of it. But people do, do keep finding different seams and places where it's being mined from. But because it's a precious thing and there's not a lot of it, it keeps the price high. If you suddenly found somewhere like on Mars or you started mining asteroids and you found one that was just basically just, you know, it was gold. The price of gold would plummet. If you flooded the market with gold, oh yeah, we can get gold anywhere now, you know, it wouldn't like when you go back a few hundred years sugar salt 
were worth a fortune, way more than gold, because they were so hard to get hold of and to come by. Um, now they're just household items, they're just normal things that we go and buy at the shop, but they were worth an absolute fortune. So our facility here, yeah, gold, we've got um, 34 litres, copper 4,000, um, copper ore, because it's getting through the gold ore that's coming in much quicker. So what I'll do now, if I set both of those, I'm not doing silicon production because that requires quartz sand and we're not running sand or anything at the moment. So yeah, that's run out at the moment until on the hour it transfers over from our other production, but we'll set those to selling as well. So anything that gets produced, will sell automatically. So all the other products that are in this one are all chugging away. Our stones and water are still there. We've still got a little bit of stone left over from what we took out of the meteorite crater. Um, and that's all been selling on the hour. And then our pay dirt over there, like I say, that's sitting at, I'm sure it's 100,000 litres. I'm gonna let that just keep chugging away because we can't do anything with it until we've got the next facility to process it. Um, then we're gonna do the trees. And this is all you know this is about establishing a colony it's, it's all the things the processes we would need in place for all the things to produce money there we go it paid at 101,000 we've still got 132,000 litres of stone in there that'll just keep chugging away and then once that all runs out and we get our new facility then we'll have I'll probably put the new facility in this bit here I don't know I'm too sure um, but yeah so this is all the, the processes like I normally do when I'm doing any um, farm I will spend a lot of time doing baling or preparing the various different required feeds for animals before getting the animals. I, I'm, I'm not reactionary, I try and be proactive if I can be with that kind of thing. So what I try to as much as possible, yeah, you've got a lot of big space in between trees here, so we can um, we can definitely, we need to be careful of the couple that are around the beehives, um, but we can definitely get a lot more trees on this plot once we've cut all these down. And we will clear them because it will give us more scope for adding more in. Um, but, yeah, so, so that preparation, that preparation is key. You know, it is make sure that you've got everything in place. And then once we've got enough money rolling in that we can then be sort of sustaining ourselves, then we can get workers up here. We can get the buildings built for workers to work. And then we move into our harvesting processes and the whole thing starts rolling forward. Um, because we're going to need workers and, and things for... The various different operations so what we can do hopefully and we'll see now sizzle me timbers um because the snow's sizzling on my lightsaber and we're making timbers i don't know i thought it was amusing i'm not sure what we're going to get out of these i'm going to do a bit of testing as i often do um with these things because I've still had this weird... I, I don't trust trees. Same as weeds. Trees, they're shifty. They're up to something. They, you know, they're around for a very long time. They see a lot of things. They know a lot of things. And they're very quiet. Apart from when they fall in the forest. I know it's bonkers. I know it's crazy. But at the end of the day, we've got chainsaws we've got axes we've got all various different things we've got the the uh bow saw we've got all the different ways of doing this why not a lightsaber it's future tech and cutting down trees it's an old process it's been happening for a long long time so what i'm gonna do well that's big isn't it um i'm gonna cut it in half i'm gonna put one in hole and see how many liters we get I'm going to cut one in half and see how many litres we get. Then I'm going to cut one into three and see how many litres we get. Because I'm curious to see... In theory, it should be... That tree is an X amount of litres. And it should be the same whether it's in half, in thirds, in quarters. It should be the same literage. But I'm, I never normally find that. I, I'm just... I'm curious. So we've got the main facility just in that direction. Over there. And then behind it, we've got an additional, and the additional is um, a platinum. So that's what's going to give us the ability to do our prefab walls, which we're going to need for building buildings. Building buildings, yes. Or once they're done, they call builds. It's a building when it's being built, but then once it's built, it's built. Mm, yeah. 
Oh, the English language is a funny old thing, isn't it? So that one I'm going to leave full. This one we're going to... Half it, and then the next one will third, and then we'll see how we, how we fare, because I am curious. I'm not going to change my to-do list for trees cut down, um, because it's all it's asking is for 10,000 trees planted. It, it, this isn't coming off of the total. I'm still going to plant 10,000 trees, regardless of the fact I've cut these down. These, I'm sure someone said it was 216 or 266 trees that are here. Let's get the light on there. Um, but I'm not sure. I can't remember if it was 216 or 266. But they're already here, so that's not that's not me planting them. Try and get us right in the middle. I tell you one thing that farm dog absolutely hates is a lightsaber. <laughs> I, I own three of them now. I've got um, you know my Star Wars obsession. I've got Ray's lightsaber, which is um, it's, it's, oh I love it. It's absolutely awesome. I've also got Luke's. Ray's is an official, you know, and it's yellow. Um, Luke's is made by a saber company. There's a few different ones out there. And you could get different configurations. They have to call them different names, but it's it's Luke's one, um, and I have that set to green. And then my other one was the first saber I ever bought, and that was that was again that was from a saber company, and it's just a, it's just a saber. It's just you turn it on, it makes the sound. You know, they make it's saber wars. There's a few different companies that make them, so you can actually have saber fights with them, and they're designed so you can hit them together, and they don't damage, and they make the crackles and the sound. They're absolutely amazing. But um, when people come around and say, oh, that's really cool, if I turn them on, oh, farm dog, he does not like it. He, I know it's awful, and I, I feel terrible. And he will, he will, his tail goes down, and he will go and find something to hide. He, he absolutely hates them, hates the light, the sound, all of it. Um, so I try not to um, put them on too often, much as I want to play with them. <laughs> As you do when you're a 50 year old child <laughs> and like i said before hey nothing wrong with being a child nothing wrong with having childlike qualities be awed by you be inspired be excited there's nothing wrong with being a child and if you want to collect and play with stuff then do it oh what was that si oh i watched a couple of series i watched um i don't think i have seen it the series silo on Apple TV, I watched that recently. Oh my days, that was good. Uh, what else? Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem was another one. Wow, all science fiction time. But Three Body Problem was incredible. I'm not sure I'm gonna get these exactly thirds, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and in Three Body Problem, one of the characters is one of the guys from um, Game of Thrones, actually. Um, and he's uh, sort of a bit of a tycoon and his company makes crisps and snacks and stuff like that and he's worth a fortune and when they go to his house <laughs> mrs city p said straight away it's like living here it's he was one of those people like me and like there's so many others like i said adam savage untested all these people that are into their movies and collectibles and you know and mrs city p said as they went through his home said you've got one of those you've got one of those you've got that as like, yeah, i know Sorry. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. So, yeah, you can use log grapples. I've said this before. I, I always started out, normally with tally handlers, using manure forks. And this one, the, the monoblock, it's got a real heavy duty front on it. Um, for log work, if you're not using the CSZ pack ones or anything like that, these work absolutely brilliantly because they're quite wide. Logs don't tend to twist. I haven't got that balance quite right. I should have come further along it. But I'm just curious to see what this is going to put in. Now, I can't remember whereabouts I've got to put this into this, but... Unfortunately, the snow is going to continue, so I can't really do a lot about that. Um, just think, if I can just get that in that gap in there. Is it here? I'm sure it was. I can't remember where the point was for it. Um, I'm going to say here.
Nope. That's for the production of cell. Where to, where's the cell wood bit? So go right all around the outside until I find it. So I'm pretty sure the stuff produces here. Oh, I'm going to have to put the thing on. It's right there. 4,997. So I'll keep a tally. Remember, put the next one in. If it goes up to around 10,000, it's just under 5,000. If the next one goes up to 10,000 when I put two in, then it's absolutely fine. But I'm, I'm, I am curious. It's just oh, one of those testings. And then what I'll do is um, we'll get this off and running. I'm curious about that, actually. Uh, let's go with that on as well. Why is there a switch there if it's not actually a... I'm assuming the lighting is automatic. That's peculiar. That's just there to confuse you. Confuse and confound. Yeah, there is lighting. I'm just assuming it is. Just thought with the weather being the way it is. That's annoying. Right. So it is right between this bit. So what I want to try and do is get the wood in here for next... Right, so let's go and grab the next couple of bits, put those in. We'll check. And I'll cut a few more trees down and we'll um, get that running. That was what I was sort of intending to do, really. I've done a lot of chatting, as I always do, but that's part and parcel. Looks like snow's going to continue for a while. It's this one that we did the two, wasn't it? I don't know if I'm going to get both bits in the, in the grab, but we can try. So, did I finish my thought the other day when I was saying about the CSZ packs being nerfed? Did I get distracted? I don't know, in the last update, it's not... The, the big bag handler's not picking up everything anymore. And it used to pick up multiples of things, so you could grab stuff, had quite a good reach and stuff on it. That's not working, not like it used to. I'm not quite sure why it got changed. Like I say, it's not hurting anybody. I know, I don't know. Maybe I did talk about it, I can't remember. No, it's not. Ah, oh, okay. This is why you need the, the proper log grapples and stuff. No, I don't, and it won't go past that either. Whereas normally, the um, telehandlers, you can get more of a 90 degree angle on that. That works a little bit better. I don't think that's going to work, is it? We do have the, the actual log grab. I should probably just go and grab that. I just thought this would work a bit better, but I don't think it's going to get onto that, is it? Come on. Maybe. Right, see you in a bit. Yeah, seems to be. I've cut a few more down. Not a huge amount, about six? Six or seven? You'd better see from the angle over there, but um, what we'll do now, let's click on that. Then go over to here. 54,000 litres in there already, so I'm going to set these on... Um, we do planks long, wood beams and prefab wool. I don't think we're going to do normal planks. That's something we, we do sort of all, I say all the time. But if we're going to be building, I suppose normal planks would be um, would help for roofing. I suppose what I should do really is put in the shingle making, so we can do like we could simulate doing the whole thing. Prefab walls, wood beams, planks long. We'd have all the prerequisites for building 
cabins, I guess. Um, the other thing I was going to say was... Um, this, everything sold, including the diesel, and we jumped up from 108,000 to 235. Now, that's not going to be hourly, because obviously the diesel, there was 28,000 litres of diesel which sold. Um, but the next hour will be very telling with regard to the productions. Now, we're going, now that we're selling the, the gold and the copper rather than gold ore and copper ore. Um, it would probably be better off if it built up a little bit and then we sold it, but it doesn't matter. So that's where we're at. Um, the few bits and bobs I was going to get done today, I wanted to get on to getting this done, and now we are producing what we need to produce for building workers' accommodations. Like I said, new tech, old process. And then we'll move forward. I just want to show you how much we've cleared. Like I say, not a huge amount, I think about five or six, maybe seven. But because they are quite spaced quite far apart, sparsely populated, you cut down a few trees and it leaves a massive space. So I'm thinking what we can replace, I would say, triple the amount of trees that are on here we could probably put down. I, I reckon. I, mean, I don't know if we'd get a full 948. But I thought if I do strip around the outside and then up and down, but if we, if we clear all of this and maybe then get potentially a thousand on here, is that is that overthinking? I think it's it's sparser down the other end actually. But yeah, we've cut a few down. We've obviously got the stumps to grind out as well at some point. We'll, we'll get onto that too. It's a pity the old saber doesn't uh, doesn't do that. That would be that would be cool, wouldn't it? Anyway. That's where I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go and make a snow martian. Um, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching.